Sadly, we lost a legend this week, and not just any legend, but an Imagineering icon, Rolly Crump. And what I love most about Rolly weren't his exceptional talents, his unique gifts, or even the multiple stamps that he put on the Disney parks that we are all still enjoying many decades later. No, what I love most about Rolly was his story. It's kind of a cute story. The title of his biography that came out in 2012, a book that I required in my History of Disneyland class, and I added it to my syllabus because I wanted my aspiring students to hear from a man who was hired by Walt Disney, who worked alongside Walt Disney, and was so moved by Walt Disney that his life and his career were never the same. But mostly, I wanted students to hear from the weird and whimsical Imagineer who was quote unquote, the worst artist Walt Disney ever hired. And from there, they could hear that story, that cute story, a story that my Wednesdays with Walt readers need to know now. Roland Crump was born in Alhambra, California, February 27, 1930. He started drawing at the age of two, and at age three, when he was blown away by the three little pigs, he decided right then and there he wanted to be a Disney artist. At the age of 16, his single mother wrote a letter to Disney trying to get his son a job. And in 1952, with zero training, zero degree, zero credentials, sure enough, Rolling Crump started working at Disney. He started out as an in-betweener, worked his way up to assistant animator, and contributed to such films as Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp, Sleeping Beauty, and 101 Dalmatians. And then in 1959, sensing a special and avant-garde spirit, Walt Disney moved him over to WED, or what we know as Imagineering today. And initially, Walt, Walt had the hardest time remembering Roland's name. Sometimes he would refer to him as Owen, other times as Orlin. Rolly's favorite name was, quote unquote, what's his name? Eventually, Walt just called him Rolly, and well, Roland just rolled with it. His first assignment as WED was to work on an often forgotten project that never actually got built, Rock Candy Mountain. Roland made an eight to 10 foot model that everyone agreed didn't look very good. And so to help make it more appealing, Crump and a number of the other Imagineers dumped a bunch of candy, candy that was Walt Disney's favorite from his childhood, dumped a bunch of candy onto the model, which only made it worse. Nauseated, the Imagineers rolled the model out into the parking lot and left it to feed the birds. Now, speaking of birds, Rolly was instrumental in turning Walt's longtime dream to have a tea room at Disneyland into Walt Disney's enchanted tiki room. Now, some of you know, early designs were for a restaurant with cage birds overhead delighting the diners down below. But when Walt, when Walt Disney saw some of the earliest artistic renderings and saw the birds in cages, his response was, you can't have birds in cages. And he was asked, well, why not, Walt? And Walt's response was, they'll poop in the food. Well, of course, the Tiki Room went on to be Disneyland's first audio animatronics attraction, and the design team relied on Rolly to craft many of the gods that adorn the Garden Pre-Show area and the Trader Sam's Tiki Bar. Well, from there, Rolly worked on an endless number of projects to include trash can designs and a number of Disneyland shops. 
and then he was famously paired with Yale Gracie to work on some of the early concepts for what would eventually become Disneyland's and Walt Disney World's Haunted Mansion. The two spent an entire year doing nothing but reading ghost stories and watching ghost movies. In other words, they spent an entire year at work having fun. Now, much of that early work never made it into the mansion, including Krupp's concept for a museum of the weird. But fortunately, some of it did survive, including images of the iconic wallpaper that symbolized the haunted mansion to this day. Now, in between dreaming up the Museum of the Weird in the early 1960s and building the Haunted Mansion attraction in the late 1960s, in between, Rowley, like so many of the other Imagineers, Rowley was called away to the 1964-65 New York World's Fair, and it was there that he was paired with Mary Blair, and the two famously brought It's a Small World to Life in a mere nine months. And because Rowley loved the kind of life that kinetic energy can bring to art, it was Rowley who built what would become the world's tallest mobile, a 120-foot marquee called the Tower of the Four Winds. And the Tower of the Four Winds stood just outside of the It's a Small World Pavilion. And as a marquee, it served to bring guests to the Pepsi-sponsored pavilion. It was incredibly popular. And how could it not? It had a hundred spinning, oscillating elements, propellers, and even a carousel. Meet me at the Tower of the Four Winds became a landmark phrase for the millions of guests who enjoyed the fair over its two-season run. And then sadly... Because of the estimated cost of $80,000 to bring the Tower of the Four Winds back home to California and install it at Disneyland, a cost of a little over three quarters of a million dollars today, well, that was just deemed too costly. And so instead, the tower was dismantled and it sits as a rolly relic somewhere off the coast, off the East Coast, the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. A few years ago, I had the pleasure of interviewing Rolly Crump along with Imagineer Bob Gurr at a Disney event in Anaheim. And Rolly, Rolly was exactly as advertised. Whimsical, engaging, charming, and pointed. And he had just turned 93 when he left us on March 12th. And while I am sad that he is gone, I am also glad that he lived a long and meaningful life. A life, my friends, that reminds us of the importance of supporting our children's artistic and creative endeavors. Rowley also reminds us that you don't need a degree or credentials to make a difference in this life or in this world. And he also reminds us you don't have to be the best. You simply, my friends, need to do your best. And you need to do your best regardless of your name, regardless of your title, and regardless of whether or not the boss calls you by your right name. Lindsay and I, we went to Trader Sam's the day after Rolly passed, and I reflected on how his handiwork surrounded everything around us. Hopefully, Rolly Crump's cute story will never be forgotten or lost to the four winds. And I want to close, I want to close with a quote Rolly gave about Disneyland many years ago. This is what he said. From day one, I have always felt that Disneyland was a gorgeous salad because of the ingredients. There is there is a little bit of something in there for everyone. The attention to detail is the most important piece of it because there is so much in there. A good example, a good example are the little figures 
in the popcorn wagons. Those, those little things are like croutons. And it's those croutons that make everything so delicious. And I hate to say it, but other theme parks, other theme parks are nothing more than just lettuce and tomato. Rest in peace, Rolly Crump. Thanks for living your cute story. And for the rest of us, never stop dreaming.